grace never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love. Sing it again, your love. Your love never fails, never gives up. Never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love. On and on. I never ever have to be afraid One thing remains One thing remains Your love Your love never fails, never gives up Never runs out on me Your love never fails, never gives up Never runs out on me Never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me, your love. In death, in life, in death, in life, I'm confident, covered by the power of your great love. My death is paid, there's nothing that I can separate. fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love. On and on.
Welcome, everybody. Let's take our seats. We're going to get started with the announcements today. Um, let's have the ushers come forward. We're going to prepare for our tithes and offering during these announcements. Um, okay, so first thing that I would like to talk about is the Great Skate Gospel Night. The Children's Ministry is attending um, a thing at Great Skate. What they do is from 6.30 to 9 o'clock on Sunday evenings, they have Christian music, and it's a gospel night. So 
If you have kids that are part of the children's ministry, um, we're just going to be there. We're going to have fun. We're going to go um, ro rollerblading. You could do rollerblading and roller skating. So um, it's Sunday, this Sunday from 6.30 to 9. The cross streets are 43rd Avenue in Peoria. So if you guys are not doing anything Sunday and you want to bring your kids, just have some night of fellowship. Bring them by Great Skate at 43rd Ave in Peoria. And admission's only $3, so please come. Um, this Saturday, we have outreach. So please come to outreach. We meet here at the church around 930, and then we go out for um, reaching the community um, after, like around 10-ish. We'll have coffee and donuts here at 930, and then we go out for, and reach the community for Jesus. And we'll bring them to service Saturday night. Amen. Um, we have an announcement from the media department. Ira's going to give that announcement. I'm going to try not to explode. I'm so excited about this. Praise God. <sighs> Hold on. Praise God. Um, who here wants to do something great for God? Maybe a little more. Praise God. Well, here's your opportunity to be bread and fish. Because bread and fish are just ordinary things that when Jesus touched, gave glory to him. Because he did something special with them. We're going to be doing a drama again by the grace of God. Halloween night. Amen. Someone, now, I want you to think about this. When you were in the world, what were you doing on Halloween night? Right, or your kids or whatever. So we got all that covered, but the point is we're going to scare the hell out of them. Amen. So this drama is awesome. We're looking, we're going to have uh, drama auditions and tryouts. That's going to be Sunday, September 6th and 13th at 2 p.m. Commitment. Commitment, commitment. If you are committed and your heart's right, we probably have something for you to do. We're going to need actors. We're going to need extras, support personnel, costumes, set design, stagehands, actors. So we want you to come. Whether you can act or not, we probably can use you. And we're going to definitely need prayer all the time regardless. So if, if you don't feel this is what God's calling you to, that's the other thing. If you don't think God's calling you to this, there's going to be spiritual attacks. That comes with the territory. But it's an opportunity to do something awesome for God because we're not just going to do it Halloween night. We're also doing it again Monday, November 2nd. So two services. We're going to be a lot of practices and, and a lot of stuff involved without getting all the details. So if you have questions, please see me or Eric or Aaron. Um, if you, uh, and we want you to show up, like I said, at the trial dates, once again, September 6th and 13th at 2 p.m. Uh, trial dates, contact Eric directly if you have any other questions. You can just call the church here at 257-1937. Choose option five or six, and that should take care of getting you over to him. And then we look forward to seeing people show up, and God's got a place for you, and it's either on this project or something else, okay? How many saw the Checkmate Illustrated Sermon last year that we did it? Okay, so that's what they're practicing for. It's for checkmate. So we had a really awesome altar call, and that's what our, our goal is, is to reach people for Jesus, and that's a great opportunity. So please, if you could help, please come on those dates that Ira said. Um, okay, First Friday, they are practicing for First Friday. They got rained out last, last First Friday, last month. So they're still practicing their dance, so they'll have practice following the service this Sunday. And is there another Sunday before that, Renee? Okay, so this is the only Sunday. So if you're going to be there at First Friday, be at practice following this service. Okay, um, men's and women's Bible studies, don't forget, every Wednesday at 6.30 in the kitchen for the women and then the youth building for the men. Um, Lou, would you like to pray for, pray for the offering, please? Father, thank you for the privilege to come before you this evening. We ask you to bless this portion of the service. Now, there are those who can give, and there are those who cannot. But you know their hearts, and when they can, they will. We ask you to bless the remainder of the service as well. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. At this time, um, Marissa is going to bless us with the song as the offering is being taken. Let's give Marissa a hand. And Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. 
No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow. Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Though I may wander, still I will follow. Though I may wander, I still will follow. Though turning back no turning back though I may wander I still will follow though I may wander I still will follow though I may wander I still will no turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Come on, Here it is. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, No 
turning back, no turning back, no turning back. Praise God. That was awesome. Praise God. Well, while we're just... Jesse, could you just keep playing for a minute? Oh, she's singing that song. Would you decide now to follow Jesus? I'm just going to ask right now if there's anybody in this room and you don't know Jesus Christ, you've never accepted him as your Lord and Savior, this is the perfect opportunity right now for you to do that. Would you just raise your hand, and I just want to pray a simple prayer with you. If you don't know Jesus, maybe you've received him in the past, but you're not living for him right now. And you need to rededicate your life to him and get back on track. If that's you, please raise your hand. We're just going to pray a simple prayer tonight. Anybody else? Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Get everybody born again, and then you can receive the word tonight. Amen? So let's just pray this prayer all together. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know you died for me, that you rose again. You shed your blood that I might have life. I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Be the Lord and master of my life. I surrender everything to you tonight. My mind, my will, my emotions, my future. I know you have good plans for me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you that I am now part of your family. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Decide to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided. You mean that? Just lift your hands to tonight. Follow Jesus. Make that declaration to God tonight. I have decided. Decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The world, the world behind us, the cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me, the cross, the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back, no turning back, no turning back. No turning back. Amen. Praise God. No matter what comes our way, we're making that declaration tonight that we're going to follow Jesus. And there's no turning back. And it it's just perfectly goes with the message that God gave me for tonight. So it's called dealing with distractions. So God, I just pray right now, Father, that you would just give people ears to hear what your spirit wants to say tonight, God. Open our spiritual eyes, God, that we could get a revelation of who you are and who we are in you, God. Thank you, God, for the plan and the purpose you have for each one of our lives, God. We want to fulfill that plan and that purpose, and we don't want to be hindered. We don't want obstacles and distractions to get us off track, Father. But we want to stay on course with you. And God, I pray right now that every person in this place is changed tonight from being in your presence, that not one person leaves here the same way they came in, God. I thank you for the work that you've already begun in people's hearts and minds, and I thank you that you will bring it to full completion. We just expect you to do great and mighty things tonight. We give you all the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. You can be seated. Do any of you have any unfinished projects lying around your house? <laughs> Probably all do. <laughs> So easy to get sidetracked, isn't it? It takes a lot of work and energy to start a project, but it takes a lot more work and energy to actually finish the job. 
Why is that? Because other things come and they take our attention and they get us distracted. And if we're not careful, the same thing can happen in the church and in our lives. It's much easier to begin a project or a change in the church or in our life than it is to see it through to completion. Because it requires that we continually focus and learn to deal with the distractions that are around us. Ephesians 6.12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Satan does not want us to accomplish anything for the Lord. He is going to put all kinds of obstacles in our way. And when those obstacles and challenges don't knock us off course, then he's going to try and distract us personally. So we need to be aware of the ways that he may try to distract us and know what we can do about it. This applies to every area of our lives, whatever we're doing. He may try to bring fear or he may try to bring deception. When we are striving to just live our life for the Lord and do the things he wants us to do, we're going to face distractions that are going to get us off track. Maybe you're facing some of these right now. Maybe in your personal life. Maybe you're being distracted by the activities in your life. Maybe you're distracted in your devotional life. Maybe you're being distracted from spending time with God. Maybe in church. Maybe you're trying to to be distracted from serving and being a part of the church. Maybe you attend church regularly, but Satan is trying to get you to be unuseful and just sit in your seat. Maybe you're being distracted in your marriage. Maybe he's trying to distract you from being a godly husband or wife. Believe me, Satan is cunning, and the distractions will sound reasonable to us. But how should we respond, and how can we prepare? I want to look at Nehemiah 6 tonight, and we're going to see some of the distractions that Nehemiah faced and learn how to deal with them so that when they come up in our lives, we know exactly what to do. So first I want to read Nehemiah 6, verses 1 through 4. When word came to Sanballat, Tobiah, Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies that I had rebuilt the wall and not a gap was left in it, Though up to that time I had not set the doors in the gates, Sanballat and Geshem sent me this message. Come, let us meet together in one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they were scheming to harm me, so I sent messengers to them with this reply. I am carrying on a great project and cannot go down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and go down to you? Four times they sent me the same message, And each time, I gave them the same answer. So a little background up to this point. Nehemiah had overcome many of the challenges of leadership. His enemies were not able to defeat him by discouraging the people. So now they wanted to distract Nehemiah himself. They said, come, let us meet together. They were giving the appearance that they were being civil. They were saying, well, since we're all going to be neighbors, let's just meet together, and we'll try to get along, and you and your people, and me and my people. And Nehemiah was still in the process of building the wall, and he knew from experience that Sanballat and Tobiah were not trustworthy. So he sends his regrets and says, sorry, I am busy, and I can't make it. And that is what we need to do. This is the first thing we need to learn from Nehemiah tonight, is you need to RSVP your regrets to your distractors. When someone is trying to distract you from what you need to be doing and accomplishing, you need to say no. When we as a church are working at moving toward accomplishing what God wants us to be and to do, Satan is going to try to distract us from that mission. When you can commit to being the person that God wants you to be, and you begin to take steps toward that, you start studying the word, you're praying more, you're being accountable to other people, you're serving in the church, you're starting to get involved, beware, because Satan is going to seek to distract you from that. How does he do that? He'll use people, or he'll use things which seem urgent for you to respond to and to go take care of. He'll say to you, oh, you need to go deal with this situation right now. 
you have this activity or, and this activity that needs you, or a problem or an issue that has been around for a while will begin to resurface in your life again. Distractions. They are schemes of the devil, and we need to be aware, especially when it has been someone who has caused, caused problems for you in the past. Like Sanballat, who's a type of, of the enemy, and Tobiah, beware that what they are trying to do now may be just to distract you from doing what you need to be doing. Don't let that happen. Step back, assess it, send your regrets that you are not going to be drawn into this distraction, and then get back to being about the Father's business. The second thing that we need to do that we can learn from Nehemiah is refuse the rumors of your distractors. Nehemiah 6, verses 5 through 8 says, Then the fifth time Sanballat sent his aid to me with the same message, and in his hand was an unsealed letter in which was written, It is reported among the nations, and Geshem says it is true, that you and the Jews are plotting to revolt, and therefore you are building the wall. Moreover, according to these reports, you are about to become their king, and have even appointed prophets to make this proclamation about you in Jerusalem. There is a king in Judah. Now this report will get back to the king, so come, let us confer together. I sent him this reply. Nothing like what you are saying is happening. You are just making it up out of your head. So here there are these men, and they're trying like crazy to distract Nehemiah again and to get him to stop what he is doing, and they're saying they're going to harm him or kill him. They can't get him to come down off the wall by being nice, so they send him this unsealed letter. It was unsealed because they wanted everyone else to be able to read it and let the rumor get out that Nehemiah was going to revolt against the king and make himself king after he finished the wall. This was supposed to get him to stop and go down to meet them so that they could harm him. But Nehemiah would not bite. He knew what he needed to be doing. He called them the liars that they were, and he didn't go to meet them to clear up the matter. This could have been really dangerous for Nehemiah. What if the word had gotten back to the king about what was intended? The Bible doesn't tell us if it did or didn't, but what if it did? And this is where our life is a godly manner that really works for our benefit. First of all, Nehemiah had worked for the king for years, and the king trusted him. The king knew his character. The people saw that he was not like other governors who used to place a heavy burden on the people, but he was a man of sacrifice. The people saw that he was willing to do the right thing even when the right thing was hard. He confronted the other leaders and nobles about their taking advantage of the people. So he didn't have to come down and go and deny the rumor because the way he had lived his life denied it for him. He just said, that's not true, and he just went, went about his business. We need to do the same thing. We need to refuse to be intimidated by rumors that will distract us from being who God wants us to be as individuals and that will distract us from fulfilling what the Lord is calling us to do as a church. But even beyond that, we need to live our lives in such a way that we can be confident that those who know us would never believe a false rumor about us. You know, there's a peace and assurance that comes from living your life that way. That is what we all need to be seeking to do. We need to be living our life in front of people in such a way that they will not believe false rumors. Oh, did you hear what Pastor Tom's trying to do? He's trying to do this and he's trying to do that. But as his wife, if somebody said something to me about him, I would say, well, that doesn't sound like, that doesn't sound like Tom. I have seen him do the right thing even when it was a hard sacrifice. Even when he didn't have to, I've seen him be humble. And I don't believe that about him. So if someone is saying, yeah, I can believe it about some false rumor about me, then it, it's probably because they don't know me. Otherwise, if they do know me and they still believe the rumor, then it's my fault for not living well enough in front of them to give them that example. Don't put yourself in that position. 
Put yourself in the position that you can refuse the rumors of those trying to distract you and continue the things that the Lord wants you to be doing. The third thing that we need to do that Nehemiah did was he received the strength of the Holy Spirit. Nehemiah 6 verse 9 says, They were all trying to frighten us, thinking their hands will get too weak for the work and it will not be completed. But Nehemiah says, But I prayed, now strengthen my hands. Nehemiah prayed for the strength of God to complete the job that he had been called to do. None of us in any circumstance are going to be able to do what God wants us to do in our own strength. We need to continually keep our focus and receive his strength. Imagine for a moment that Nehemiah was facing all these challenges and sensing that people were out to kill him and and others were turning against him. But it's in moments like that that we so desperately want to take things into our own hands. He could have said, Lord, I thought you wanted to come and, and you wanted me to build this wall. So why are these things going on? Maybe I should go and meet with them and clear up the matter. Maybe I should try to appease these men and go and attack them so they won't bother me anymore. And we cry out in our own situations, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he says, I've already told you, like he told Nehemiah, go build the wall, remove the disgrace from my people. That was what God had asked him to do. It didn't matter what was going on around him. It didn't matter who was trying to get him to come down off the wall. He was to stick with whatever God had asked him to do. In the situation that you might find yourself in today, maybe you've known what it, what it is God wants you to do, but then here's come all these distractions, and now you've gotten sidetracked. Maybe you're being distracted from being the spouse that God wants you to be. Maybe you have relationships that are distracting you. Keep your focus and pray and receive God's strength. Satan will use anything and anyone in his quest to bring you down. 1 Peter 5, verses 8 and 9 says, Be self-controlled and alert, because your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. We have to stand firm in God's strength. Maybe you're being distracted from serving the Lord, like in Nehemiah's case. You're being distracted from serving in the capacity that you know God has called you in because you're focusing on the distractions instead of the one thing that he's asked you to do. This is why you need to be praying and asking God for more strength of the Holy Spirit to accomplish those things he wants you to do or to be the person that he wants you to be. You can't do it by yourself. Zechariah 4, 6 says, it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Receive the strength of the spirit in those moments when your flesh wants to act up. Because he's the only one that can strengthen your hands to be able to do what he wants you to do. Rely on him and nothing else. And the last thing that we need to do, just as Nehemiah did, we have to resist the advice that is contrary to the word of God. Nehemiah 6, verses 10 through 14, continues the story. One day I went to the house of Shemaiah, son of Deliah, and son of Mehetabal. I don't know where they get all these names. Who was shut in at his home. And he said, let us meet at the house of God inside the temple, and let us close the temple doors because the men are coming to kill you. By night they are coming to kill you. But I said, should a man like me run away? Or should one like me go into the temple to save his life? I will not go. I realized that God had not sent him, but that he had prophesied against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. He had been hired to intimidate me so that I would commit a sin by doing this, and then they would give me a bad name to discredit me. Remember Tobiah and Sanballat, oh my God, because of what they have done. Remember also the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets who have been trying to intimidate me. See, Nehemiah knows that, that there's something wrong now. He knows that only the priests are allowed to go to the, to the holy place. He knows this because he knows God. 
and he knows the word of God. They wanted him to do something so that they could discredit him. Now, this almost seems like a rational thing to do. People are trying to kill me, and God wants me to finish this wall, so I'll just run into God's presence to protect myself. So when we're doing what what God wants us to do, and we know that we're in God's will, we don't ever need to protect ourselves by doing what he doesn't want us to do. And he will never guide us to go against his word. You can be sure that the Lord is not behind what you're being asked to do if you're being directed to go against the word of God. Even if a friend gives you advice that is contrary to the word, don't allow it. Don't believe it. Because they're either trying to harm you or they are themselves being deceived by Satan. There are going to be times where it's going to be difficult to keep going because of the distractions around us. And when those times come, you just have to stop and pray and ask for strength. Don't let others get you outside and get you off track. Keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. Keep doing what you know is right to do. Don't listen to the false rumors that are started about you. Don't feel like you have to go defend yourself. Let the life that you're living speak loudly for you. And be in the word so that you know the word. Continue to pray so you'll be strengthened by the Holy Spirit so that you won't do anything contrary to what God has put in his word so that you can glorify him and fulfill the vision that he is giving you and to be the person that he wants you to be. So when we do those things and when we rely on him, then we will be able to complete the task and be that person God's calling us to be. As Nehemiah continued and did not allow the distractions to derail him, look at what what happened in verses 15 and 16. It says, so the wall was completed on the 25th of Elul in 52 days. When all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self-confidence because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. In less than two months, God built the wall through Nehemiah and the people that he led. What incredible things is God trying to do in your life right now? Have you been allowing distractions to keep you from moving forward and doing what God wants you to do or from being the person that God wants you to be? You have to recognize that it is Satan who is trying to distract you. And pray that the Lord would strengthen you to continue to pursue his will for your life. Amen? Amen. I know that's a short message tonight, but I... Praise God. I know that that as our church is moving forward, and and Pastor Gus has been talking about, you know, that the bowl of stew is going to be put before you. And the distractions are going to come and we have to be so focused and we have to maintain our walk with the Lord and not let anybody pull us off track. Some of you may be in relationships right now that you need to get out of. You know, Pastor Gus, cut, cut, cut. And they could be good relationships, but they may not be spurring you on in your walk with God. We need people that are going to encourage us. We need people that that are going to lift us up. We need people that you can tell your your dreams and your visions and your secrets to. And they'll walk right along with you and help you fulfill God's purpose. We don't need people that are going to be negative and speak negative things into our lives. I call them basement people. (laughs) You don't need any basement people in your life. You don't need people that are going to put you down so that they can get ahead. Amen? Amen. We need to be careful who we hang out with, who we talk to, who we tell our our personal things to. You can't just go and tell anybody. You can't tell everybody everything. You just can't. You need people you can trust. You know, God's vision, what he's placed in your heart, is a sacred thing. And you need to be only sharing it with people who will encourage you and pray for you and help you. Otherwise, people are just going to say, oh, you can't do that. You'll never accomplish that. And then you'll be defeated. 
So I want to encourage you tonight, whatever it is that's distracting you, might be money, might be your job, it might be your spouse. You know, if you're married, you guys need to get on the same page. You need to walk together as one. Build each other up. My husband is my, my biggest fan, my best friend. And I think he would say the same thing. But <laughs> he says yes. <laughs> There's such a oneness um, between us in our marriage that, you know, we can tell each other anything and, and know that it, it stays between us and, and we, we know that we're going to encourage each other and, and um, there's never going to be a, a put down or um, anything like that. And God puts people together for that very reason because he has a, something for you to accomplish even as a couple. And, and if you're not walking in oneness with your spouse, and you're coming to church, and you guys are sitting here, um, you need to get it right. There's purpose in marriage. Purpose in God putting you together and making you one flesh. And, you know, you need to be able to walk together, to pray together, to encourage each other, and to find out what the plan and the vision is that God has for your marriage. God has a plan for every single marriage. And for those of you that are single... It's the same thing. You're married to the Lord. He's your husband. He's the one that we should be sharing our secrets with. Amen. So I want to just give you an opportunity tonight. I don't know what what you're struggling with, what's distracting you, but God wants to remove the distractions tonight. He wants to put us all in a place where we can move forward. We're getting ready to move forward as, as a body in this church. And, and the messages have been coming, and we're getting the same message over and over and over. Have you noticed? From like four different people. Revival is coming, but we're not ready for revival. We need to line ourselves up with the word. We need to line ourselves up with God's will and with God's plan. And that means letting go. we got to shake off some stuff and let go of some things. Some of you are just running in circles. You can't stay focused on one thing. You go from this to this to this to this, and, and nothing ever gets done. That's not God's plan. So, I'm, Jesse, if you want to just... Give us some background music here. I'm going to ask you right now. It's it's still early, and we got, we've got plenty of time. But I want to give you guys an opportunity tonight. If 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 that's you, and you're being distracted, and you just can't seem to to get into focus, and um, maybe you don't even know what God wants you to do, but I want to pray for you tonight and give you an opportunity like Nehemiah. Maybe you've been letting things that people say about you run your life. The only thing that we need to listen to is what God says about us. Everybody else's opinion is just their opinion. But what God says about us is the truth. Maybe you've been trying to do things on your own and walk in your own flesh when you need the Holy Spirit to strengthen you to come into your circumstances and to cause you to go forward. If you're dealing with some distractions tonight that you would really like broken off of your life, I'm going to invite you to come up and I want to pray for you before you leave here.
Father. Thank you, Father. Just lift your hands and worship God right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, God, we just focus on you right now. devotion, my only focus is to worship you. Thank you, Jesus. You are the lover of our souls. Nothing that satisfies us outside of you, God.
praying that you would just fill your people tonight, God, to overflowing, God, with your anointing, with your presence, God. Your anointing is what breaks the yoke. Let the anointing increase to the point that those yokes are just breaking off of your people right now. Jesus. that every bondage, every bondage would be removed right now in the name of Jesus. Every obstacle that is standing in the way of people's future, God, I just command that that mountain be cast into the sea. God, I thank you right now that you're just clearing the the path, God. You're making the path straight before them, straight and plain before them, God, that they can walk into their destiny and their purpose, Father. God, I just pray right now that you're removing distractions, Father. You're clearing their minds so they can focus on you, God. I pray, God, that they would begin to hear your voice in a way they've never heard you before, Father. Holy Spirit, turn up the volume, God, in their their spiritual ears that they would hear you so clearly. Silence the voice of the enemy. Silence the voice of their flesh. Silence the voice of the world. And Holy Spirit, I pray that your voice would be so loud. God, I pray right now for those that have been disobedient to your word, Father. That as they call on your name right now, Father, that forgiveness is flowing, God. I pray that you're bringing them back into right relationship with you, Father. I pray that you're giving them that whatever they need, Father, to obey you and to walk in your will, God. Father, I pray for those that are in relationships that they know that they need to get out of, that you would give them the courage and the strength. It's not by might, it's not by power, it's by your spirit. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just come and and make that dividing line in their relationships, Father. I pray that you would put a hedge of protection around them, God, that the enemy cannot penetrate. I pray that as they hold up the shield of faith that it would quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. God, I pray for your peace, Father, to just flow right now through people's hearts and minds, God. Where there's been turmoil, God, I pray for peace. God, I bind the deception and the lies that the enemy has spoken to your people, God, in the name of Jesus. Satan, we know that you're the father of lies. And we just command you to take your hands off of God's people. You have no authority over them. You're under our feet. God, I release the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth right now, to speak truth to their hearts and their minds in Christ Jesus. God, I pray that you would just clear up people's schedules, that the busyness would go in the name of Jesus. God, that they could just be about your work and about your kingdom, Father. That everything would be brought into perspective, Father. Everything would be brought into alignment, God, with your word and with your will for their lives. Father, for those that have been distracted because they need to make decisions and they can't decide what to do, I pray right now, Father, that that your word would just come to them strong tonight while they're here in your presence, God, that you would settle those questions and those decisions that they need to make, Father. And your word says that peace would be the deciding factor, God, that that as soon as that they know what they're supposed to do, they're going to have perfect peace about it, Father. So I thank you right now. Holy Spirit, that you are making decisions in people's minds right now, Father. Those things that looked impossible, God, you're you're speaking to people's hearts and minds right now, and you're telling them that all things are possible with me. Just believe. Just believe. There's nothing too difficult for me, says the Lord. God, 
those dreams and those visions that you had in your heart and you feel like they've died, I just pray right now that every dead thing comes to life. I release the resurrection power of the living God right now over dreams and over visions and over callings. I, I just ask right now, God, that you bring them back to life, Father. And I pray that they would rise up on the inside of your people, God, and that there would be such a stirring, God. I pray that you would fan that flame that's on the inside of them, God, that you would stir up the gifts, God, that you put on the inside of your people, God. I pray, God, that they would just begin to burn, Father, with the fire of the Holy Spirit, that they can't escape your calling, God, that you have on their lives. But they would run to you, God, and they would run after you, God, rather than running away from you. God, I just pray that you would free up people's time. Free up their time, God. If they're using their time for things that aren't glorifying you, God, I pray that you just remove those things from their lives, God. That they would spend more time with you. More time getting to know you, God. More time getting to know who they are in you, God. bring balance, bring balance, God. God, where, where pain, pain has been a distraction in some people's lives, God. I just speak to that pain right now in the name of Jesus, and I command it to be gone in Jesus' name. I pray that bodies are being healed right now, Father. I pray that hearts are being healed, God. I pray that, that their minds, God, are being healed right now, Father, from, from turmoil, God. I, I pray that you're binding up the wounds, God, of, of their past and hurts of their past, God, and that pain is no longer going to be a distraction for them, God. I, I pray right now, I come against people's past, dictating their future, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pain, you're just a word, and at the name of Jesus, you will bow your knee. You cannot keep God's people tied up in bondage and pain. In the name of Jesus, I release you tonight. If that's you, lift your hands. I release you right now from that pain, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. you that you're such a good God that you love us so much God that you, you don't want to leave us the way we are but God you you want to change us into your image God you want to make us more like you every day God Some of you, addictions have been your distraction. The enemy keeps tormenting you and pulling you back. In the name of Jesus, I command every addiction to be broken off of your people tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for freedom, God. Freedom to come to your people tonight, God. Drugs, alcohol, Cigarettes, pornography, lust, perversion, pride, money. I break the power of these addictions over your people, God. That they could be free to go forward, God, and accomplish what you're calling them to be.
God, your word says you've given us power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm us, God. No harm shall come to God's people. God, help us to walk in the authority that you've given us, God that we could rise up above our circumstances and walk in the authority and the freedom that you've already provided for us. Father, I just thank you tonight that we just we shake off. We shake off everything that is not of you and we leave it right here, God. We're not going to walk out the door with that thing on us anymore, that that bondage, that distraction that obstruction we're leaving it here tonight god thank you right now that your just your glory is just sweeping through this altar god and that you're setting people free you're giving new hope god where where there hasn't been any hope you're bringing life god to all the dead places and i thank you father that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world Where the enemy has tried to put you down, God is wanting to raise you up. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. We're just, Pastor Tom and I are just going to come through and, and just lay hands on each one of you very briefly. Now, whatever you need, I want you to believe that when we touch you, the Spirit of God is going to take care of whatever your issue is. How many of you believe that tonight? <laughs>